When Randall Keith Orton became the bookies' favourite to win the Royal Rumble, the general consensus was, hmm, that's a funny way of spelling The Undertaker. When he won, a large chunk of the audience went, oh, that's a funny way of kicking us full in the dick. Because here's the thing, Randall is one of the most decorated wrestlers ever, a 12-time world champion and the first ever WWE World Heavyweight Champion, but there's just something about his game that cools fans towards him. I don't really enjoy doing these lists because Randall is about 45 times more talented than I am at everything, but over the years it's been impossible not to notice some of these wrinkles. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 8 bad in-ring habits that Randall Orton needs to change. Number 8. Overuse of the elevated DDT. Holding up basic kayfabe logic for a moment, why would a wrestler repeatedly perform a big move which no sod ever kicks out of? Why would Ziggler keep doing the fame asser? Why would Sammy keep doing the blue thunder bomb? They never win matches with them, but of course wrestlers and road agents rely on basic move recognition to pop the crowd. But here's the thing, if no one ever gets pinned by them, it neuters the effect of them a wee bit. Case in point, Orton's elevated DDT. When you break it down, it should be an absolute devastating move. And when he first started using it in 2007 during a feud with Shawn Michaels, it was. However, overuse of the move has led to it becoming vintage Orton, and what would be a solid finisher for another superstar is just another move that the crowd barely pops for anymore. Number 7. His moveset needs some new additions. What are Orton's huge crowd-popping moves? The RKO, obviously, the punt, the elevated DDT sometimes, the backbreaker, and the scoop slam. He has a few others, but they're mostly just strikes, like where he goes a bit stampy on all of his foe's limbs. Alas, he barely uses his one lauded standing dropkick anymore, and the moves in Randall Orton's repertoire are almost a decade old. And hey, say what you want about John Cena, over the years he's tried out a bunch of new moves like Hurricane Rana, Springboard Stunners, Weird Neck Breakers, Power Bombs. Sure, the RKO is always awesome, but a lack of new mid-match moves severely hinders him and is one of the main reasons why fans are quickly turned off if he's paired with someone similarly undynamic. Number 6. That Temper Ah, the infamous Randall Temper that has left many a journalist intimidated, many a fan told to go f*** themselves, and many a diva having to deal with the new contents of her bag. It doesn't happen week in and week out, but Orson's volatile temperament has left him breaking kayfabe and flouting the PG rules on more than one occasion. For example, he hit Kofi Kingston with a savage RKO and chewed him out in the ring for botching a finish to their match. In 2010, Miz attempted a cash-in on WWE Champion Sheamus. The plan was for Miz to turn around into an RKO from Orton, however Miz moved at the last moment, meaning Orton had to change his position. Orton lost his rag, slapped Miz before hitting the finisher, then cussed him out, calling him a douche and a mother f then he got in trouble again in 2012, this time for flipping off the Boston crowd at Night of Champions. Look at you. You rascal Keith Orton. Number 5. The setup for the RKO makes no sense. Now this is a personal peeve. I know that wrestling is silly, but Orton's setup for the RKO makes no sense. To set up his sneak attack finisher, Randall Orton bangs as hard as he can on the canvas, often right next to his opponent's head. It signals to the crowd that an RKO is coming, but it also signals to his opponent that an RKO is coming. The fans would howl with derision if Steve Austin started shouting, Stunner, Stunner, I'm going to stunner you, when everyone was imminent, so why is it okay that Orton loudly heralds the arrival of his finisher. It's evident by the crowd reaction that I'm the only one who cares about this, but it's still dumb. Number four, he's a light bumper. Now this one you can sort of excuse. See, despite being a main eventer for well over a decade, Randall Orton isn't that old. He's only 36 and he's hopefully got a long time to go before he really has to start protecting himself in the ring. Problem is, Orton seems to be doing that already. Randall often takes light bumps without that necessary snap, whether it's landing softly on his back when he's falling from a strike, landing on his legs first when being thrown to the outside, then hitting the floor, or protecting himself too much with his hands when being thrown into posts or tables. There is a reason for some of this, however. It's partly because Orton has had a lot of trouble with his shoulders, having missed time on three different occasions during his career for shoulder-related injuries. Perhaps he's at the stage where he should be treating his shoulders with due care, but there's a fine line between protecting yourself and underselling offense by too wide a margin. Number three, he won't control a raucous crowd. There comes a time for all superstars where the crowd turns on their match and their rowdiness starts to get out of control. It's happened to Orton on a number of occasions and he's often unwilling to bring the crowd back on side. Instead of leaning forward and stepping on the gas or screaming at the crowd or doing something to get them worked up, he often seems to take his foot off the pedal. He's done this a bunch of times, failing to get the crowd back during Cena Orton at the Royal Rumble 2014, Big Show Orton at Survivor Series 2013, and practically any match with Sheamus. It doesn't completely fall on him, no one wrestles on their own, but Orton has proved if rubbed the wrong way, he's as likely to give up on a match rather than fight to save it. Number 2. Methodical equals slow. The announcers often praise Randall Orton for being a methodical worker. For anyone who doesn't speak Michael Cole, that means Randall Orton often moves at the pace of erosion. Like so many of the bad habits on this list, Orton's pace seems often determined by his mood. Recently he's been okay because he's clearly been into this angle with Wyatt, but more often than not when Orton's frustrated, he will work at a pace that saps the life out of a match. Big case in point, in 2014 Orton was working a summer program with Roman Reigns, with the young and popular Samoan set to go over the Viper. This apparently got Orton rankled, and during one-on-one -on -one matches with Reigns, at house shows leading up to SummerSlam, he worked a really 
really methodical pace. According to reports, it got to the point of Orton getting heat on himself backstage, with his peers accusing him of deliberately working a crowd-killing style, potentially to damage Reigns' push. And just like that, Orton turns babyface to everyone watching this. And number one, he has a terminal case of bored face. Randall Keith Orton has a very expressive face. Sometimes that expression is, I would rather be anywhere but here. You can see it in his eyes, those moments of wearily staring off into the crowd, pacing blank-faced on the outside or listlessly applying a rest hold. Sometimes he just doesn't seem in the match. Can't always blame the man. He's been in some crushingly lifeless feuds in his career, including 450 matches between him and John Cena. Randall is immensely talented and he's lasted as long as he has for a good reason. He's charismatic, has superb physical control and potentially the most over finisher in the industry. If he just controlled his mood rather than the other way around, he would be damn near unstoppable and definitely more watchable. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon. We're never going to stop doing magazines called wrestling. It's time for issue four, the first magazine of 2017. To celebrate, we're looking back on the wrestling year that was, including end of year awards for best and worst matches of 2016, best and worst wrestlers of 2016, best and worst feuds, and many more. Also, a gigantic career retrospective on AJ Styles, Dixie Carter's crimes against wrestling, and how WWE should have booked the road to WrestleMania 2016, written by this sexual Catherine Wheel. As ever, the magazine is available now to order at shop.whatculture.com for the love of God, buy it.